Ladies and gentlemen, it's the moment you've been waiting for. It's a conversation that must be had today and not tomorrow. Welcome to another episode of I'm Listening, I'm Ready with your host, Andrew E. Guy. Let's talk about it. I can hear you very well, Andrew. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, it's a good morning. It's an amazing morning. It's an amazing morning. It's an amazing morning. morning. Absolutely. I mean, My son always says to me in the morning, like, he'll say, how are you, mom? And all I do is I just go, I breathe in and I breathe out. He goes, okay, I get it. Awesome. Because there's awesome. nothing else I have to do. <laughs> you know, but you know, we have breath and it's a good morning. Oh, it's a blessed morning. Listen, uh, let me start off. Ladies and gentlemen, um, this is Andrew E. Guy in the M-O-R-N-I-N-G. Welcome to another episode of I'm Listening, I Am Ready. It's the podcast that is dedicated for those who are on the go. Whether you're traveling by land, ear, or sea, that's right, this is me in the M-O-R-N-I-N-G today. I am overly excited. You know, I, I'm always excited. But this morning, I am really, really, really excited. See, my eyes are popping out. I'm trying to put them back mm -hmm. in, but they just won't stay in. The seat that mm -hmm. I'm sitting on, I'm telling you, I'm on the hot chair. I am really excited. My guest this morning on the podcast is a great friend of mine, entrepreneur extraordinaire, best-selling Canadian author, I mean, an icon in the neighborhood and in their community. She is simply amazing. I know you're wondering, who is this individual? Who are you talking about? It's a superstar. That's exactly right. It's my good friend. Hear it nice and loud. Rosita Hall. Don't you just love the way that sounds? Oh, I, lo I love the way that sounds. <laughs> Rosita, please say hi to the people. Hello, people. I'm so absolutely excited to be here this morning. Thank you so much for this honor and this privilege, Andrew. I'm just amazed at what you've been doing, and I'm thrilled to be here. You are more than welcome, my friend. Absolutely more than welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited when we reached out to uh, Rosita, and I said, Rosita, listen, we're doing this big thing. We're trying to bring some people on so they can help to inspire. In other words, make people mighty, to motivate them, inspire them, and transform them so they can be empowered to make the journey, to fulfill Absolutely. their goal. And I couldn't think of anyone else within my reach mm -hmm. that has impacted me in a positive way than Rosita. Rosita, I mean, I want to start off with kind of like, how did we meet anyway? How did we meet? Well, I, I believe that you reached out to me uh, on your on your journey here. You got here to Hamilton, didn't know very many people. Correct. Uh, you reached out to me, and I'm big on one of the promises I made to a couple of the people who were inspiration in my life in terms yes. of when I started out my speaking business. One of the promises I made to them is that when someone came to me looking for help, I would always be there to support them because I had like wonderful people doing that for me. Awesome. So it was a no-brainer for me when you reached out and said, you know, I want to get into this business. I want to talk to some people who are doing it. So it was, it was great. I, I really enjoyed talking to you. And I, and I had a sense that you were someone who was really motivated. Yes. And you um, were serious about what you were going to do and that whatever it took, you were going to make it happen. And it wow. looks like you've done that. I think you summed it up. Because, you know, I think one of the... Um, the nerve wracking thing is when you move into a neighborhood. I mean, if it's just you alone, I mean, you're okay. You can, you know, meander your way and kind of figure things out. But when yeah. you're here and you move the family, everyone is here. Mm -hmm. There is this extra weight on your shoulder that, you know, Absolutely. there's two kind of weights. There's a the physical weight, weight, and then there is the weight, you know, the W-E-I-G-H-T and yeah. the W-A-I-T. So you got this yeah. weight, but you still got to wait to make things yes. happen. So got it. I am you really, got really it. excited that, you know, you accepted the phone call and you emailed yes. me back. Not many people are doing that nowadays, Rosie. Yeah, I, I don't, I, for me, like I say, it's a no brainer. I don't understand why anybody would not um, want to just connect back with someone when they're reaching out because right. for me, my whole life has been centered around connecting with people. Awesome. And I will, I will take advantage of any opportunity to be able to connect with another human being because there's just so much that you could, I mean, just those, that little bit of time that I spent talking to you, right. I was actually very inspired by what you were doing. And I learned a few little things from you along the way. Like if one thing, determination like this, I'm thinking this guy is determined. Like he's <laughs> stopping at nothing. He's going to go up and get exactly what he wants. Um, so it was very inspiring for me, too, to hear from you. I love it. I love it. I remember the first time I spoke to you and you said, okay, fine. <clears throat> All right, my schedule is really kind of packed right now. But you know what? 
we're going to do it on, it was on a Monday morning yeah. and yeah. we called and we scheduled our time. And of course I was a little nervous. I have to keep it yeah. real with you. Yeah. I yeah. was a little nervous. I said, like, okay, what kind of question do I ask her? Yes. I'm trying to do this. I have done this in the United States, but what is it like in Canada? I'm a Canadian citizen and I was teaching yes. in Jacksonville at the time. So it's like a welcome home for me. So how do I even break into this thing? And yeah. it was just amazing, the advice that you gave me. You are patient. You took yeah. your time. And I'm like, wow, many people wouldn't do that. I've reached out to several other individuals, but it's not the same. It's absolutely, absolutely. not the same. And I'm so thrilled that we connected. I really Yeah, am. that's great. That's fantastic. All right. Now, I want to start off with a few questions um, before we get into the, um, the, the meat of everything that we're going to do. When you started, was there an individual that really inspired you, that kind of, you know, I wouldn't say almost like a, a mentor, but was there someone that you looked up to to help you to get started? Wow. You know, that's like a very, that's a good question. And it's a, it's a big story behind that. Um, Tell it, young lady. Tell yeah, it. Well, because, <laughs> because actually what happened for me, my background is that I'm actually um, a social worker. Okay. So I was doing social work for 20 some odd years. Wow. And it just so happened that um, uh, in the last 10 years, I was the executive director. Uh -huh. And part of that, doing that job is I had to be out in the community. Right. Um, chatting and talking to people. And, and at one point, our organization, along with a number of social service agencies, had lost right. quite a bit of funding. Wow. And so there was a conference being planned by the government, and they wanted all the agencies to come who had lost money to sort of strategize about how we we're going to you know, survive. Right. And lucky for me, nobody wanted to speak. Uh, they wanted someone to come up and, and have a conversation with these government officials. It was a conference, actually. Right. And so I just said, like, I will. Like, I'd never done it before, but I go, I, I'll, like, I was pretty bold. Like, I'll do it um, with no real plan about what I was going to say or anything. But I just said, yeah, I'll do it. And wow. so the day of that conference when I did it, yes. I didn't know that there was a reporter in the room. So there was a reporter in the room. And so the next morning when I woke up, there was this big article in the Hamilton Spectator. Right. And it said Rosita was riveting. And I remember I looked at it and I thought, that's kind of interesting because I don't know very many people with my name. Like that's right. a very unusual name. So I just kind of closed the paper up. But when I came home that evening, my husband goes, did you see that article about you? And I go, that was about me? And I read it. So the lady's name was Denise Davey. And she wrote this long article about how wow. I inspired this group and all. It, was, it went on and on and on. And as a result of that, somebody from the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers called wow. me. Mm -hmm. And they said, we want to start a chapter here in Hamilton. Right. And we want you to be a part of it. And I was like, what is the Canadian Association? I'm a social worker. Like, what are you talking about? Right. But anyways, I ended up going to these meetings. And then one thing led to another. I kind of got excited about what? Oh, this is kind of interesting what's happening. So the skills that I was learning, I actually took them out on the road, but I was still working. And because my organization had lost so much funding, I right. thought, why don't I go? Because people were saying, come and tell me how you kept your organization going, how you right. stayed so positive, how you got up there and did this yeah. speech. So I would go on my lunch hours and after work and speak to these other agencies and encourage them to keep going. Nice. And but I would say there's a catch, though, you need to pay me an honorarium. And right. so I would take that honorarium and give it back to my organization. Oh, well, see, that's, as that's a fundraiser. just like Rosie. <laughs> but here's what happened, though. Not Don't get too excited, Andrew, because then one day a light bulb went on and I thought, why don't I keep the money? <laughs> so then I thought, OK, maybe I should be keeping the money like this is. So it got to be so much that I was being asked so much that I decided that I had to make a decision. Was I going to continue as a social worker or was I going to go out into the community? And I thought I could have greater impact outside right. of the doors of that agency. So now I can touch many agencies. So I decided that I was going to do that. So I quit my job. I went home. Um, 20 years ago, and I opened up this great big book I got from the library because, you know, we weren't as much into technology as we are now. Correct. And I flipped through it, and believe it or not, the National Speakers Association in the States, I flipped open the book, and I just started going through it, going through it, and all of a sudden, I saw a woman there with my name. Her name was Rosita Perez. And she had the same background as me. She was a social worker. Nice. She quit her job. She And now she was like one of the top paid speakers in the States, the National Speakers Association. And I thought, why don't you call her? So I did. I just picked up the phone and I called her. And I got, I left a message. Um, I was kind of nervous. I'm thinking, she's not going to call me back. Like one of the top speakers in the States, like she's not going to call me back. 
Within five minutes, she called me back. Man. And, man. She, and then she told me to fax her something, and I faxed her something, and then she called me back again, and she gave me all kinds of things about what I should be doing. And she says, and I had my company name, Motivated Minds, and she says, get rid of that. Put your name out there. She was just like this lifesaver. So in answer to your question, it was a long story getting there, but that's who my mentor was. The woman's name was Rosita Perez. She was from the United States. She became my mentor. She lived in Florida. I could call her at any given time. When I told people that I was connected with Rosita Perez, anybody in the speaking industry thought I was being silly and foolish, that there's no way I was connected with her because she was, was one of the top female speakers in the States. Yeah. And I said, yeah. no, I am. And they go, how did you do that? And I said, I picked up the phone and I called her and she said, yes. Yeah. Well, how much is she charging you? Nothing. Oh. And so they kept asking me these questions. So I called one day and I said, Zita, I don't understand this. People are confused by the fact that you're mentoring me and I don't get why they don't believe me, number one, and right. that they say that you should be charging me a fee. And she said, I'm going to tell you why I'm not charging you a fee because I actually had gone to Florida to meet her as well. Really? And she said, from the moment I met you, I saw nothing but genuineness oh i saw an authentic on. person say that young lady say it standing in front of me and i said that's somebody that i know is going to go someplace and i want to help her i want to be yes. a part of that story yeah. and she god may her soul rest in peace she left us a few years ago but she mm. was an incredible light for me and one of the things that she always said to me angie which i never forgot which is many reasons why i reached out to you and other people who who connect with me is she said don't ever get too big for who you are because what happens sometimes she says i've been in this industry for a long time and people push their way around and they yes. walk into a room like they own the room and she says no you make room for other people when you walk into a space oh, and man. she always promised me that i would always now help the next person i said what can i give back to you and she says you're going to run into other speakers new people coming in younger speakers coming in and i want you to give to them what i have given to you Wow. So she just was this bright light in my life and she would send me notes constantly. She would encourage me. She was just this incredible human being. And if I can just say, Andrew, there was one point in my life where I was ready to do a presentation, believe it or not. And you know how much prep goes into a presentation. Exactly. But there was one particular presentation where I was doing something with some nurses here in Hamilton. And for the life of me, I couldn't get that presentation together. Like I just, it, I don't know what was going on with me, but I couldn't get it together up to the point where I was ready that morning. And I'm like, I have nothing. Like I have notes, but I have nothing. Like it was just one of those experiences I was having. So I called her. And she said, my dear, what's wrong? I can tell that something in your voice, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. And I said, I got this presentation like in like an hour and I have nothing, like I'm empty. And she says, no, no, no. Here's what I want you to do. And I said, what? She goes, have you showered yet? And I said, no. She goes, go take a shower. Go take a shower. Go take a shower. And when you're there, it's going to all come to you going to do a fantastic job wow. so i thought i hung up the phone thinking god like what are you doing you're supposed to be my mentor like take a right. shower like what's this all about like why should i take a shower so i go and take a shower and i'm like you're waiting for something right is something going to come and all of a sudden andrew what came to me was this song like when mm. i was a kid and yes. it was like, oh, I had a little chicken and he wouldn't eat an egg. So I shook that chicken by his leg. And it was like the song about a chicken, a silly little kid's chicken song. Right, and right. I'm drying myself out and I'm still hearing, oh, I had a little chicken and he wouldn't lay an egg. And I'm like, what is going on? Then I get there and I'm leaning against the wall. The lady's introducing me and I'm a mess. Like I'm going, this is the first time in life where I'm going to actually get booed off a stage. Right. Because I have no idea what I'm going to be saying. Like it's not, something's not clicking today. God, why is this not clicking for me? Wow. So the ladies introducing me, I'm walking up to the stage and I'm like, I'm, I'm dead. Like I have nothing, like, I have nothing. And I get up and I go on the stage and there's like 200 people staring at me and I take the microphone and I started singing, oh, I had a little chicken and he wouldn't let me. And they're all just clapping and they're clapping and they're laughing and they're clapping. Woo! And they just loved it. <laughs> Like they absolutely loved it, Andrew. I'm telling you, they loved it. The wow. responses from that that speaking engagement, and after that, everything flowed. Like wow. absolutely everything flowed. No notes, no nothing. Everything flowed, and I was a standing ovation. And I'm like, where did that come from? Wow. So that lady, the wisdom that she shared with me, she 
probably had an experience like that before. So she's saying, here's what you got to do. Calm yourself down. Go take right. a shower. It's going to come. Don't worry. Yeah. You, I have faith in you. When I told her that story, she says, I know you were going to do a good job. Like I knew wow. it was going to come. So it's, it's so important to have those individuals in your life who yes. believe in you no matter what. Yes. You know what, Rose? As I, as I listen to you speak, I, I, I think about the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusaders. Have you watched that movie? Yep, yep. One of my favorite movies. And yep. the reason why I love that movie is because I talk about this all the time because there's a part in the movie when he was supposed to cross this abyss and there was no earth, there was no bottom, there was nothing. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing like most of us nowadays, right? We're stepping out into this unknown. I moved here from the United States from mm -hmm. Florida. I have been speaking to people for many years. I have been working with students for many years. And mm -hmm. I was a, a, a PD um, teacher when I go out and I speak to the teachers because there was something that was doing in the classroom that was clicking. Mm -hmm. And the district came to our school and said, okay, wow, we need to see what he's doing because we had some mm -hmm. kids that they said, quote unquote, were at risk, right? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I talked to these teachers about. I said, they are not at risk. You are at risk. Mm -hmm. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, you don't want to see the, what the future is going to look like. You need to do what you need to do to make sure that when you get older, they are in place to assist you. Yes, yes, My I agree. The purpose for saying that is that we seldom look back. Most of, mm -hmm. I've reached out to several speakers before, reach out to several individuals within the area. As a matter of fact, yeah. case in point, um, to protect the innocent. One mm -hmm. of the names you sent me, I reached out to this individual. Mm -hmm. I had coffee with this individual. Mm -hmm. and. Um, Sat there, spoke to this individual. I said, you know, I am new here trying to do this. And have you ever gotten the urge when you feel like someone is just trying to shuffle you off to somebody else? Well, yes. You yeah. don't yeah. really have a time for you. Yeah. You know, yeah. I am too big yeah. right now. I am yeah. large. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You're not on yeah. my radar. Oh, my gosh. And I am sitting there I'm like, oh, my goodness. And it was kind of like uh, after the meeting was over, they shook my hand and kind of, you know, kind of lead you out the door kind of thing. It was like, oh, hey, take care of yourself. And I have never spoken to that individual again. I have to. Wow. Admit, um, for wow. those that you're listening right now, there are times when you're going to go through situations where you're going to feel as if you are the smallest person in the room. Mm -hmm. Take heart. David was the smallest, but he said, hey, listen, yes. this rock that I have is not the small rock. It's who is standing yes. behind the rock. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that if, if God has made a way for you to get there, he will get yes. you through yes. there. Does that Absolutely. make sense? So Absolutely. live in courage. Be in courage. I am sitting Absolutely. here. I'm listening to my good friend. I'm telling you, I'm Rosita Hall. She has touched many lives. And when I came here to Hamilton, she was the first individual. Of all the emails and contacts that I've reached out to, she was the first person mm -hmm. that ever reached out to me. And really encourage me. So I want to tell you guys, whatever you're doing, when if you've got there, you've gotten that experience so you can share it. If you don't share it, it's going to go down into the earth and mm -hmm. it's going to become mulch mm -hmm. and the tree is going to start dance. Your gift's supposed mm -hmm. to be in the yeah. hearts of men, not in the roots of trees. Don't get me excited up in there. Oh, Rose, listen, listen. No, but, but it's, <laughs> what you're saying is absolutely, no, well, what you're saying is absolutely true. And I always say to people, when you reach a certain level, don't forget to put one hand on and pull somebody else up. Correct. And I always say there's three things you can do. There's one hand where you're pulling up, the other one's at the side where you're assisting those who are right at the level that you are. Yes. And then you always have one hand up because you want to reach up if there's somebody else to help you out. So yes. I think it's, it's in, if you want to complete the full circle, um, you have to always remember that it's not always about you, but how you can elevate and support and encourage other people. Because that's part of, I think that's part of everybody's mission in this life is that it's not always about you, but how can you reach out and support and encourage and lift up other people? Because um, therefore, go I, right? By the grace of God, like you yes. have to know that maybe one day you'll need to be that person that says, That's hey, correct. can you help That's me? Absolutely correct. I love yeah, what you're saying. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned something about the hand and, and the Lord had given me this uh, insight one day. Yes. I was studying uh, anatomy and physiology and right. Arkansas, that's my background. And right. after I finished that, I went over to Florida to work on a master's 
and the doctorate degree in physical right. medicine. So when I was there in the cadaver lab, I'm there cutting away at this body. Don't mean to gross you out, okay? No, so, no, no, you're not at all. This is interesting. <laughs> I not at all. Mean. So no, it's they're cutting on this cadaver, Rosita, and the uh, Lord spoke to me. He said, okay, fine, one day you're going to write a book and you're going to use the anatomy of the body to explain to people what the kingdom of God is about. Oh, <laughs> like, okay. yeah, right. oh. so, and I'm there with the scalpel, right? And I'm thinking to myself, yeah. yeah, okay. So I'm looking around. There was absolutely nobody else that was inside the room. And I'm like, Okay, somebody is either playing the game or I am hearing stuff or this guy spoke. <laughs> really, it was kind of spooky. He said, yeah, right, right. write a book that explained mm -hmm. to people about how the kingdom of God works. And it's going to be called wow. The Anatomy of the Kingdom. Hence, oh, wow. my book, The Anatomy of the Kingdom. Now, Rosita, wow. Wow. I was nervous because I didn't think I was somebody great. He said, doctors are going to read it. PhDs right. are going to read it. Yes, yes. They think they have already arrived and they know everything right. that they need to right. know. And their background knowledge is going to be the foundation that they stand and say, no, this book is going to be the eye opener for many. You're going to write it. I was completely flabbergasted. Wow. I wow. lived in doubt for six years because I said, Lord, this could not be you. And how, how dare you give me such a big assignment? I am going to flop on this. Six yeah. years. Wow, wow. Can I tell you, amazing. can I confess something? <laughs> that, yes, please do. You know, when I, I, I contacted you, right? He uh -huh. started dealing with me. I came to Hamilton. There was absolutely nothing. There was no jobs. There was nothing. And um, I got a shop. I opened up a business downtown Hamilton. And then it was right. just, I'm like, I'm sitting there. Like 10, 16 hours, Rosita. That was not me. I was no, so no, frustrated. No. I'm like, I I'm supposed that. to be on a stage. Yeah, you know where you're supposed to be. Oh, Rosita, I was walking around the stage, um, picturing myself on these stage, giving these big uh, talks. And I was like, but Lord, right. where is that? And then he said, right. you need to reach out. And then that's when I met you. In that wow. process. That's a powerful said, story. Wow. Don't forget your assignment. I said, what is that? Yeah. Um, the book. And every single day, I close the shop down or my wife will be in the shop and I go to the Hamilton Public Library and Good sat in a corner for 10 hours and make sure Good that book you. was down. Good for you. Good for you. Determination. Oh. Remember I said that? You're very determined. I knew that. Rosita, yeah. I am yeah. so thankful that, you know, we're actually having this conversation right now. There are That's other people out there who needs this. There are other people who are struggling. There are other people who don't understand that. It's something that's inside of them. It's like finding your pathway to personal yes. success. And that's what this conversation is about. That's why I needed you. Yeah. And you're I think, helping I, millions. Exactly. And I think around that, um, in terms of what you're saying, is that I yes. think people have to own their authentic power. Correct. Um, because one of the things that's worked for me is really always being true to myself. Right. Like walking in your truth every single day. Like I say, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I only know how to be me. I don't know how to do all these other things. And I think that's where I always say we have like a power base. Yes. And then we have a planet place. I and love so it. the power base is your truth. It's your truth. It's love who it. you are. Like yes. in the house, you have to have a sturdy foundation, right? So right. on your power base, you, you need to have that. So no matter what happens, you stay firm because you know what your value system are. You know what your belief system are. You know where your strength comes from. You right. know who you are at the core. And yes. then to say your planet place is, it's all the places that you kind of end up in in life, but yes. you are able to thrive and survive in those planet places mm. because you have your foundation, yes. which is your power base. Yes. And I think oftentimes people are all over the place yes. in terms of trying to figure out what they want in life and what they should be doing and who they should be with because they don't know who they are. And oh. you have to know who you are. Um, everybody came into this world with a gift, with a talent, with a skill, yes. with a uniqueness that absolutely nobody else has. And it needs to be utilized, but it cannot be utilized if you don't understand who it is and who you are uh, right. at, at the core. I mean, that's just, for me, that's just my, I, I never find myself strained because I know that that foundation keeps me right where I need to mm. be, regardless yes. of where my planet place is. Yes. And, and it's funny, I, I, I come from a very large family. Like I have eight brothers and five sisters. Wow. And one of the things that happened when I was younger was that I would get teased a lot. 
even by my siblings because they would say you are we don't get you like you are so different like you are just like so different like right. you know because i was like the the really kind one and i didn't yes. get in like trouble they were always in trouble with something i was the one who always was like the observer i would sit back and kind of nice. just watch people and i never kind of got myself caught up in stuff or followed the crowd followed right. my siblings whatever they were doing and they'd always say we don't know we don't get you you're like so different and then what i realized as i got older was that that I didn't use that. I didn't see that anymore as them offending me. I saw right. that as, wow, look at the privilege. I tapped into something at a very young age. Yeah. I realized at a very young age that I didn't have to follow anybody else, that God gave me something so unique mm. and so special, and that I needed to rise to that every single day. I had to show my appreciation of that every single day. And so now my siblings always say to me, God, like we're almost jealous that you figured that out at a young age because some of us are still trying to figure that out. And then they say, how did you figure that out? Right. And I said, I, I, because I sat in the wisdom. I sat in a place of observing other people. Mm. I sat with, with, I think when you silence all the noise and I was really good at doing that, stillness really does speak. You hear that all the time and stillness absolutely speaks. And I, and I fell in love with that like i just thought this is beautiful this is amazing right. that you can tap into this thing and and when i was younger i didn't know what to call it i didn't understand right. what it was but i knew that that i was gifted with something and i and not just me i believe that everybody was gifted with something mm. very unique but that not everyone is able to tap into that at such a young age and there are actually adults who still haven't been able to tap into it and for that i think that's a sad thing because Every single person on this planet has something that the world needs. Every single person has something that the world needs. And that's I what the, I love doing in my presentations is encouraging people right. to go out there. Even when, when you talked to earlier about me mentoring, like when I mentor speakers right now, one, and any one of them will tell you when they say to me, will you come to my presentation and critique it? And I right. say, absolutely not. I will <laughs> you said that to me too. Oh, no, yeah, I will not critique your presentation right. because you know what? I'm not going to critique anything that God's given to you like that. You right. figure out what you're supposed to do with what he gave you. And if you want any kind of critique, maybe the people who are paying you will want to critique you. But I will never come and tell you how you should perform on a platform. I need, I know what I need to do. I will encourage you in whatever way you feel you need to go, but absolutely not. I mean, who do I think I am that I would critique somebody else's presence? Mm. No, it's not, you know, that's not part of who I am. Speaking of um, two things I wanted to, um, to address, mm -hmm. you know, you mentioned discovering your gifts at yes. an early age. Yes. That is the epitome of the Joseph story. Yeah. Joseph would just walk around and talk. I have this dream. Da, 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 da. And his brothers were like, dude, we don't want to hear this. Yeah. You know, it got to the point where they hated him, mm -hmm. you know, wanted to take his life. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that all of these things he had to go through to uh, to hone the gift that was in him. I tell people when I do presentation, I said that the life, there's a difference between life and living. Life is a gift yes. wrapped up in a package and living yeah. is the process by where you open up your gift and you can have yeah. Christmas any single yes. day. I said, you have oh, got to it. open yes. it. If you don't open your package, then guess what's going to happen? Then your gift is trapped inside this yes. package and it will never, ever be seen or experience the development. I love that. I love that. Now. I love ahead. that. And I think sometimes what happens is sometimes people, instead of opening their gift, they're opening somebody else's gift. Oh, yes, indeed. You know what I mean? And I say to people, you know, you have to be careful. Don't be accepting every gift that comes to you. Pay True. attention to your own gift because, you Correct. know, if you have a gift, if, you know, if somebody shows up at your door, <laughs> Andrew, with a box and you hear a tick, 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 you might not <laughs> want to open that box up. You know what I mean? But some people do and they open up these boxes. I go, no, when you hear the tick and you go return to sender because right. everybody will tell you how you should live. You should be doing it. this. You should doing that and we accept all these things and of course you know we want to hear back from people we want to hear advice from people but the ultimate decision has to be yours in That's terms right. of what you think is best for you and i've seen so many people um, want to do things that really that's not what their purpose is they're tying it into somebody else's you know Correct. they see somebody else doing something they go oh i want to do that and i don't know if you've experienced this um even on the platform um andrew you'll have people come to you afterwards and say i want to do exactly what you're doing mm -mm. like exactly what you're doing and i'll go hey listen i don't poo poo on anybody's dreams you want me to support you i will support you Correct. but i have never 
probably in the 20 years that I've done it, I've had like tons of people come to me and say that and I've supported them. And maybe about three that I can name have actually followed through because right. it really was where they were supposed to be. Correct. Sometimes you look at shiny objects and you go, oh, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Maybe Not later. necessarily. Yeah. Right. But if you go back to your power base again, then yes. you're going to figure out what that is that you should be doing. And you will know when you're doing it like this Andrew, because everything inside of you will just explode. Wow. Like you just can't help yourself. Like you just like, it's just like, ah, like you just love it. Right. Cause you, and you wake up in the morning and you're on fire and you're ready to do it. And I mean, I'm like, that, that's my story. Like I'm like, I know I'm in the right place because it's just, when I go on that platform, it's just sheer joy and I'm it's absolute sheer joy. And the, and the, best part of that sheer joy is knowing that you have had an impact on someone else mm. in a very mm. positive way. I and love the way you said thing. it. It's you, you, having, having that impact is what's so critical for me. Like so critical. Even when this may sound a little egotistical, but I, it, I, I I'm not coming from that place. Yes. Even when I got to the place where people would say, I have your evaluations here. You're going to want to read them. And I go, no, I don't want to read them. And they'd say, you don't want your evaluation. Good. No, no, I don't want the evaluations because I'm not coming in for the evaluations. Mm -hmm. I'm coming in because I feel like I, I'm supposed to be here and I'm supposed to help people and I'm supposed to support people. And so my hope is that I've supported the majority of the people. And if I have done that, then I'm very grateful, but I don't need all the hoopla of, wow, look how great you are and look how wonderful you did. Right. Look at this. I don't need to read those because I know from the moment I leave that platform, how I've done, how I feel. Mm -hmm. And my goal is always to never leave that platform unless I feel like I've had some impact. Wow. And because this is what it's all about, right? We have to have impact on other human beings. And it's not about all the, well, look how great you are. I don't care about that. You know what? When I think about two things, when you said impact, it reminded me of my upcoming book, Create Your Greatest Impact, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned about what we say to ourselves. Everything that you're saying, it resonates with me so much. Mm -hmm. As a teacher in Jacksonville, Florida, I used to take notes. I do a reflection after every class. Right. And I'll sit back and I think about what happened in the class period. I'll think about who was sitting in front of me. One of the things that I tend to do is I make sure I ask the students at the beginning of the semester, what do you want to become? What mm, do you see yourself that. being? And it's, there's a saying that we use in the, in the field of education. It says, um, begin with the end in mind, right? You know, our creator did that. He saw what we look like and he said, okay, fine. I know what you look like. I know what you're supposed to be, but I'm going to start you here. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I always ask them and they'll say, oh, Mr. Guy, I'm not going to be anything and so forth. This is not going to happen. It's not going to happen in this house. It's not going to happen in these walls. And it's not going to happen on my watch. And they say, well, Mr. Guy, you're not wearing a watch. I say, here's what I'm trying to get you to say. Mm -hmm. Whatever you say, you will have. And I didn't know that what I was basically conditioning these students to do is to make sure they're using the right words. And years later, the Lord said to me, you need to write a book called Work Your Words. I said, Work wow. Your Words. Work Your Words. What does that mean? It said, if words worked, will produce a dividend. If you don't work your words, then you will have everything else that you're not supposed to have. He said, my, I work my words. My words went out and said, let there be, let there be. And the word worked. He said, don't be a sayer, but be a doer of the word. And so yeah. I want to encourage you, if you listen to me for the first time, you're listening to the podcast of Andrew E. Guy. What is it? Eiler Podcast. I'm listening. I am ready. It's the podcast that is dedicated for those who are on the GO. Whether you're traveling by land, air, or sea, you're listening to me in the M-O-R-N-I-N-G. All right. Thank you so much. You're Have very a welcome. Fantastic day. All right. You too. Take care, ma'am. Take care. Bye bye. Okay, bye.
Until next time, keep listening, live ready, talk soon.